Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Katie Explains. In this episode we're going to be talking about every type of XSS attack. Now I get this question like fairly often where people ask me to just talk about every single XSS attack. Um, so in this video I'm going to very briefly explain them because I'm going to have videos coming out for each individual one and to be honest you kind of don't need too much detail to understand it and I can give you guys some further resources so you can understand it. So XSS can be really confusing. Why are there four? What do each mean? What's the difference between DOM and generic and reflected and stored? What is DOM XSS anyway? So I'm going to go over every single um, uh, type and then I'm going to go and do an example of each one and show you how the payloads work and stuff like that. So let's start with stored XSS. Uh, this is the simplest kind of XSS. This is our bog standard XSS, right? This is our like very simple, you put something in uh, like a comment, you press, uh, you know, post comment, um, and then you see your XSS payload being fired on the next page. So what's really happening under the hood is that payload is being sent to the database and then the database is just recalling that with everything else um, and it's called every single time the page is loaded and that's really important for the impact of it because that means that any person who visited visits that web page you know whether or not that's you testing whether or not your xss works whether or not that's you know 30 other users of a of a, um, a web page that's always going to be called um, so if you have something in there, maybe you chain it with a CSRF. We're going to be talking about chaining in a future video, by the way. Whether that's doing something like XSS Hunter to to see their um, cookies or something like that, that will always happen, no matter who loads up the page, and it will be unique for them. Um, so that's our stored XSS. Now that is our very simple XSS. That's the one that is one of the easiest ones to find and also one of the easiest ones um, to exploit and to really understand the impact of. So there's an example. Um, we have our basic comment form here. You know we have last name, first name, email and then we have a big old text box. Now we can expect this might appear if we had you know blog comments um, that might go to the database and then we might be able to see them. Um, so if you place an XSS into any of these fields and it appears as a comment when you submit it and then it fires, so your alert zero fires, it's a stored XSS. So um, if you put in your XSS payload here and then the next one you get you know, your standard zero <laughs> and your OK button. Um, if that happens, and it happens not just for you but anyone who loads the page, that is a stored XSS. Uh, and this is the sort of bog standard example. This is an example that probably won't work on a live system because live systems are smarter than this. <laughs> so you might still, even if it's say stored XSS, you'll get things like, um, we call them WAF um, uh, things, uh, web application firewalls. Um, and that kind of blocks, that might block script, that might block alert, that might block you know, HTML ones, it might block this. And what we do is we kind of have this list of other ways to, to fire an XSS. Um, I'm going to leave some in the description because there's some really, really, really good ones and some ones you wouldn't necessarily think of. Like especially, you know, using, I think one that's more popular now is using an SVG to fire it. Some of them are like, oh, if you move your mouse cursor to the middle of the screen and do it in tiny little circles, the XSS will fire. So there's quite a lot of ways to to deal with the web application firewall. But actually the this WAF doesn't change the type of XSS we're dealing with. It's just how we're making the payload fire. So if it goes in the database, no matter what the payload is, it's a stored XSS. Cool, right, so let's talk about blind XSS. So this is something that's definitely becoming more popular nowadays, um, and it has for a while actually. It's a type of stored XSS, right? It's not, a new type of XSS, it's just a stored version. The difference really being is that you, as in you the hacker, can't necessarily see alert zero pop up because it's popping up on a page that you can't see. So it might be an administration control panel, it might be um, a 
I don't know, report functionality, it might be a log. Um, and instead we use something called XSS Hunter or specially crafted payloads. We set up burp collaborator instances. Um, and that's to check whether or not the XSS ever fires. So there'll be way more info on uh, blind cross-site scripting next week when the full video for that comes out. Um, there's a demo and everything. I think you're really going to like that video. Um, and there'll be a video on Burp Collaborator sometime in the future when I actually do that Burp series that I need to do. Um, so blind XSS is really not different from stored XSS. It's just firing somewhere you can't necessarily see. Oftentimes you have to wait for it to, f to fire the payload. Um, sometimes you might be waiting, you know, months before a payload actually fires and it might not even fire on the domain you expect it to fire on. Um, so here's an example. So here we have a report functionality. Now reports don't appear to a user necessarily. They might just say thank you for your report. But this will end up in some administrator, some moderators like control panel or something um, where they can see all of the things that's happening and they can see all the reports. Um, and if we can get something in here and it fires when admin looks at it, you know, we have our blind XSS payload here. This is XSS Hunter. Um, if this works and it fires and we get something from blind XSS Hunter, that is a blind XSS. However, because this part here is stored in a database, it's still a stored XSS. It doesn't actually change um, how the XSS works. It's just changing where it's firing from. Um, and that's a really important difference to remember. So then we have DOM-based XSS. So this is a little bit more tricky. So DOM-based XSS exploits the DOM. Now, what is the DOM? The DOM is basically how a document is pre like represented in JavaScript. Um, if you're really curious about this, I really highly recommend just playing around with like jQuery or something and understanding how the DOM works and how you can manipulate the DOM as a developer and then looking at what DOM XSS looks like. Um, but basically, in a vulnerable page, a developer has used something like document location. And what document location does is get the current URL. And there's a bunch of these different ones. Like there's ones that get the search terms. There's ones that can grab um, location data. There's ones that grab other kind of metadata. It's all kind of metadata driven. So in this example, this is from um, Burt Premium. And it gives you these kinds of uh, reports. So here we have these two, it's highlighted these two as being vulnerable. So here we have the URL, which is getting document location to string. So we know the document location here is being passed to something. Um, so if we can edit the document location, we can do something later on. Okay, so how is it being used? Now we can see here we've got some nav tabs and we've got this one here. And what it's basically doing is it's populating this navbar with URL here. And then that is referring to this URL here, which is our document location. Now we can see the syntax is roughly kind of this. And then we got this and then we've got tab show. So what we want to do is we want to put in a payload in document location here that basically will do our alert zero. So we edit document location, which then reflects back into the web page. Um, and here we might put, you know, document location equals, we'll close that and then we'll put in our alert one and then we'll open, maybe open it again. You know, it doesn't really matter to get our tab working. So we put something in here to get that to work. Um, and this is where we put in our alert zero. So let's look at an example. This is a really basic example. This uses window location search. And that is everything that comes after the web page. So here, um, what comes after the web page whoops, is test. Um, so that's being printed out on the um, page. Now, we know it's being it's printing out from a vulnerable JS source window location search and it has some kind of other processing this by default will HTML encode um, but you can do like you can force it to do a UR like decode it which is what my little test script here has done so then you place a payload into it so here we're just printing out tests but actually here 
we're now printing out our alert zero and the um, payload is firing. Now, if it does fire, you have a DOM-based XSS. DOM-based XSS are not difficult to run and get working. What makes them kind of challenging is that they often require knowledge about how to find, you know, sources like window location search or windows location. Figure out how they're being used in the DOM so you can craft that valid payload. You know, you're still going to have your web application firewalls. You're still going to have issues with getting that to run. Um, but what it means is that the payload doesn't happen in a form. It happens in something like the URL bar. That's a DOM-based XSS. I really recommend reading the Portswigger Web Security Academy DOM-based XSS page as well as their labs on it because they're really, really good. They're very, very interesting and you can really understand it a lot better than my kind of whirlwind tour I'm doing of different types of XSS. Um, I will probably do a video on this on the future, uh, but there's no plans right now. So maybe, maybe just go read that and then when you forget, I'll make a video. <laughs> So that's DOM-based XSS. Let's talk about reflected XSS. So in stored XSS, our payload is being stored by the database and then appearing to us. Now, what does that mean? That means we've got some kind of data source here and the XSS payload is going in and the XSS payload is coming out. But not always does every kind of input in a form end up going into the database, right? Sometimes it just ends up on a different page. If you think about something like Amazon, if you've got a product in Amazon, it might say, once you purchase it, thank you for your purchase of item. So that's called a reflected input. Now, we can't necessarily change the type of item we buy, but maybe it also has our name in there. You know, thanks Katie for purchasing um your new keyboard whatever so what we look for is we need to change what we can change like katie that's our reflected data now net in something like amazon that would be you know stored in the database perhaps but on other pages it's not necessarily going to be stored by the database it may still be reflected so it's kind of like the opposite of stored xss well in stored we've got it to the database reflected is it doesn't touch the database it's just reflected on the same page or another page and really the attack kind of is done by setting up a malicious link that would then be sent to a victim so you could craft this is an example here on a damn vulnerable web app where in you could send this url to somebody and then you could cause the kind of um reflected xss here now at the moment we're just printing out this thing which is our session our, our document cookie but actually if we could do that kind of using something like xss hunter where it's not going to appear we can actually get that sent to us without the user even knowing it was done so that's the kind of attack let's have a look at how you would actually do it so here's our form again now we assume that this data is all being sent to the database however maybe you know first name might not be sent maybe they don't care about your name maybe they're only storing your email in case they need to contact you and they're storing your comments later on so if your first name and last name isn't being stored, maybe it just appears, you know, um, the, instead the value is reflected onto a page. For example, thank you for your comment first name, but maybe that first name just never touches the database. Maybe the email doesn't even touch the database because they want to anonymize their data. So you can replace your first name with a payload. Now, very simple. It's same as stored XSS, the payload here. We just have our script alert zero script. Uh, and if that goes in our first name and the first name is then reflected on another page, then we've got our reflected XSS. So then, so then we have the kind of three big XSS, but you'll also see this one, self XSS. Uh, it's usually out of scope and specifically out of scope. And I thought I'd explain it just to kind of introduce the concept. So unlike all of the other XSS which actually require an attacker to think, uh, a self XSS involves using social engineering to get someone to insert something into their developer console 
or edit the HTML and then cause an XSS. So here I put alert zero into the developer console and Google replies back with zero. I haven't got an XSS on Google there. I've just done an XSS on myself using alert zero. Um, now you could, as in something like reflect the XSS or even some of the other types, you could in theory put in an XSS hunter and steal someone's cookies. There's a large amount of social interact, like social engineering that has to go into you being able to successfully have that attack, which is usually why it's out of scope. So that's every type of XSS attack explained. I hope that this was interesting or informative. It really was a bit of a whirlwind tour of XSS. Um, so I hope it's kind of got you interested. I've placed some links in the description so you can find out more about each different type of attack and if you want to have a go, especially some of the um, Portswigger Web Security Academy stuff is really good for learning XSS because it um, goes in so much detail uh, and it allows you to really play around with it and do the uh, labs. So I hope this has been interesting, thank you very much for watching and next week will be Blind XSS, we're going all in to XSS the next few weeks so thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next week, thank you.